Hello guys, we are back with our next tutorial. In this tutorial, let's go through wave equation, guys. One dimensional wave equation is nothing but. So, we'll be going through the theorem now and I'll be uploading the problem later on. Okay. So, basically, the wave equation is nothing but an equation of the form dou square y by dou t square is equals to c square into dou square y by dou x square. So, I hope now everyone is clear with this equation. You can even write this as u dou square u by dou t square is equals to c square dou square u by dou x square even that or this will be a correct way that depends on you is called as a wave equation okay let us consider an elastic string placed along the x-axis stretched to a length of l okay let us assume this as our fixed point and this will be our string of length l or x length l it start at x and this is the end of x is equals to 0 and L x is equals to l so initial and final position let y of x comma t t will be just i think so the time yeah maybe depending the uh, okay denoted the denotes this denotes the displacement from the equilibrium position yeah as we fluctuate it if you just vibrate it a bit upper or lower we're gonna get like this right okay that will be a wave so this is the equation. I hope everyone got a small idea now. Just let me take it. Pen, guys. This sketch is really, really tough to write. Okay, so the boundary conditions are nothing but at the initial position. Initial position of the string and the final position of the string. That is 0 to L. The both position, the values are zeros. So guys, these things will be repeating again in heat equation, wave equation and Laplace. So remember these conditions guys, these conditions will be the most important part. So this is of the form of motion of the string which depends on the initial displacement guys. Yeah, it depends on the initial displacement where time t is equal to zero. That's t is time only guys. So y of x comma zero is equals to f of x and the initial velocity. Okay, dy by dt is nothing but the distance traveled with respect to time is nothing but the velocity where t is equal to 0 will be rg of x most in most of the conditions it will be equal to 0 guys ok so the initial boundary values of a problem can be solved as we just gone through the in the previous study we have just gone through the method of separation of variables right in that this will be the main equation where y is in terms of x and t right here the question is y in terms of x and t so this will be our equation so from the main equation this equation just right here from this equation we can say that we'll be differentiating y with respect to t twice and y with respect to x twice so this is our y equation so i'll be differentiating it with respect to t twice and x twice so i got this equations so i'll be substituting these two equations in our main formula so that i just got this okay so from the method of separation of variables so i have just took x this, that side and t this side so i have just got this equation okay so i have just assumed that this is equals to a okay guys so i just assumed that is equals to a so now initially i'll be taking one and three and then i'll be taking two and three this will be the equation if i take one and three so we can just write it down like this also double dash means nothing but that's a square so I'll be taking m as an auxiliary equation value minus this will be 1 guys so a is equals to 0 m square is equals to a right so even in this case also we can do the same okay m square minus here we are having c also so is equals to 0 m square is nothing but is equals to a c square right so here if we try to do we are gonna get root of a here we will be getting c root a and one will be the positive value another will be the negative value here we will be getting plus plus root a and minus root a and here we will be getting m square that is equals to we are gonna get a okay we will be just assuming the value of a as a sum square that will be better so let me assume a is equals to initially we will be assuming p square then we will be assuming minus p square and at the end we will be assuming 0 ok this will be our 3 conditions guys as we don't know the exact value so we will be considering the 3 values so initially when we take the value p square we are gonna get p square here so we are gonna get 
the roots are nothing but plus p and minus p okay so i'll be just going through it i'll be just writing these values okay just give me a second guys m square is equal to i'll be just writing them on the top of the paper so that okay m square is equals to a and m square is equals to a c square so initially condition will be assuming that a is positive and a is equals to p square so a is equals to p square in both the equations so that in this we gonna get p and minus p as the roots so i hope everyone remember this formula that is nothing but if the roots are real and different we gonna just substitute c1 into e power m1 x plus c2 into e power m2 x from this by substituting in this formula we'll be getting like this plus p and minus p similarly for this we gonna get cp and minus cp I have just substituted them so like that I have got that equation so assuming if the value is negative and minus p square okay once we try to substitute minus p square here okay then if we under root it under root it we gonna get uh, in terms of imaginary right so we'll be uh, by solving that imaginary part we gonna get like this guys so if you if your memory power is a bit good you can just remember them or you can just solve the problem in the basic way guys so we'll be getting these two equations as we are getting the imaginary part if we just try to do the imaginary part let us assume that okay alpha plus or minus a beta okay alpha plus or minus a beta okay so it is nothing but e power alpha x into cos p cos a cos beta x plus sin beta y so now i hope everyone is clear with this okay i have just wrote the formula previously on a paper so let me show it off so if the roots are imaginary alpha plus i alpha plus i plus or minus i beta so we'll be writing e power alpha x into c1 cos beta x plus c2 sin beta x so just by doing that we're gonna get this equation right here okay similarly if a is equals to 0 we gonna get a is equals to 0 means we gonna get two similar roots and two similar roots so from that we can say that c1 into x plus c2 t is equals to c3 t plus c4 so i hope everyone is now clear up to here so basically this is wave equation right so wave equation means it will be having sine or cos so in the three equations we are having only sine and cos in this so the second one will be the exact solution for this wave equation problems we'll be using this formula guys so now i hope everyone is now clear with the wave equation formula so in the next tutorial we'll be going through the problem thank you thanks for watching